Okay, the next point I want to make is oxidative stress. And this is a major consequence of hyperglycemia. So here's the issue. When blood sugar is when, when blood sugar is high, blood sugar synonymous with blood glucose, it will lead to an overproduction of reactive oxygen species or ROS. I may sometimes just refer to it as ROS, ROS. These are free radicals that you've heard of. You've heard of free radicals. You've heard of oxidative stress. That just means you have cells that are making more reactive oxygen species. These are problematic because they're highly reactive and they can damage everything from proteins in and out of a cell, DNA in the nucleus of a cell. They can damage lipids that are in cells or circulating like on in LDL. So whenever you have more oxidative stress, you have the potential for a lot of damage. Now, even acutely, hyperglycemia leads to an overproduction of reactive oxygen species because it overloads the the cell with energy um, so at the end of at the end of all metabolism of nutrient metabolism we're breaking down fats breaking down ketones breaking down lactate breaking down glucose if it uses the mitochondria which all of those can do all of them do absolutely Glucose can either use the mitochondria or not, but the moment the mitochondria is involved, there's something called the electron transport system. Some people call it the electron transport chain. I call it a system. I think that's a more accurate term for reasons I won't get into. But essentially, when a cell becomes inundated with glucose, it beca- it it has to metabolize that glucose in one way or another. And there's evidence to suggest, I have a paper linked here, that it actually overwhelms the first complex, the first kind of enzymatic group or or process within this electron transport system that is the main area of actually producing the ATP or the, the, the the molecule that the cell needs to get any kind of work done. It overwhelms complex one. So complex one is just getting this these molecules uh, uh, overfed. It's getting stuffed, shoved in its mouth, and some of it's just sort of spilling out. And this is actually a phenomenon that we would refer to as electron leakage. So we're not, the electron transport system is so overloaded that it's not handling the electrons very well, which is giving rise to the birth of these reactive oxygen species. Um, So that's a direct effect of, um, of hyperglycemia. In fact, a study that I've linked here had 20 particular participants and in just over just a two hour period increased their glucose levels to 15 millimolar which is a a pretty reasonable amount that's high but absolutely not impossible to get to and they found that over this time they measured a plasma marker of oxidative stress called nitro tyrosine and it was sky it skyrocketed so this direct marker of oxidative stress just went through the roof just with one single bout of hyperglycemia. Now, that has consequences, including on the blood vessel, where where you have more oxidative stress, you're you're risking damaging the blood vessel directly, um, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, and also altering lipoproteins. I have started talking about it more, but also my friend and colleague, Dr. Paul Reynolds, also a professor in the cell biology department here at BYU. He and I have published multiple papers together on these topics, and it has been his area of research for some time, which is um, advanced glycation end products, AGEs, advanced glycation end products. Now, advanced glycation end products are problematic in their own right, but the next topic we get to will highlight a consequence of that um, with their receptors. But Advanced glycation end products are these toxic molecules that are formed when glucose or other simple sugars, fructose, in fact, fructose can do it even more than glucose can, um, but not all simple sugars because, for example, allulose has little to no effect on on glycation. Um, So with glucose, because that is the topic, um, the glucose molecule will irreversibly bind other molecules like proteins like or in amino acids or fats or even DNA. And all of this, as you have undergone this glycation, in fact, even the proteins in skin, collagen, um, and as the 
glucose molecule is irreversibly binding, you, you're damaging these things. And this is why glycation is known to contribute to things like retinopathy or problems of vision, kidney disease, atherosclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, premature wrinkles and aging um, with as the glycation is affecting the collagen in the skin. So all of these tissues are susceptible to glycation and once glycated um, because of these advanced glycation or becoming advanced glycation end products, they are irreversibly damaged and then have to be cleaned off um, um, or you know, resolved by basically breaking it all down.